Hey y'all, welcome back to another estrogen release video. I am Asia, and today's video is exactly what the title is, why YouTube doesn't like small creators. Before we get started, I have to give off this little disclaimer. YouTube, please do not delete my channel for what I am about to say. Still like doing YouTube and I do not plan on quitting anytime soon. So please don't be mad at me. Love you. Okay, let's get to the nitty gritty. Because I want to be a full time content creator, I have to study algorithms. Algorithms are basically the adult version of a math assignment. It's statistics, it's analytics, a bunch of numbers that... But it's tools that you want to use in order to capitalize on your engagement. Not only do I have to learn about them, I also have to stay up to date with them because they change from year to year. And I'm not going to lie, they've been kicking my butt. I'm not really thriving in the algorithm area. Personally, I feel like I follow all the rules, but I don't see any significant change in regards to my channel. Another disclaimer, I'm not here to complain about the algorithm. That's not the purpose of this video. For real, for real, you have to deal with these type of challenges in any field that you go into. All jobs have obstacles that you have to overcome. This just so happens to be the obstacle in this field. I really just wanna share with creators and especially smaller creators that we're in the same boat. We're all trying to get our content seen. We're all trying to get traffic to flow through our channels. I just want you to know that it might not necessarily be your fault or your content's fault on why that traffic isn't coming, period. So let's get back into the reason of this video. So I'm reading countless articles about algorithms, trying to learn more about algorithms, trying to learn tips and tricks on how to beat the algorithm, all of that. I'm implementing everything. Like I said, I'm following the rules, but again, no engagement. I'm not gonna lie, that blows me. So to make myself feel less crazy, I start Googling. So I wanna see like, is there anybody out there that feels the same way that I feel? Is there anybody out there that feels like they're following the algorithm's requirement, but nothing is happening? So I came across this article. And after reading it, it kind of put things in a better perspective. For me, I kind of felt like I started to see things a little bit more clearly. Another disclaimer. I know that a big part of doing YouTube or being a content creator is producing good content as well as consistency. I will be the first person to admit that I have room to grow in both areas. Definitely on content and most definitely on consistency. I get that, and that's all me. But another part of doing well on any platform is understanding its algorithm. And if you're not on the right side of the algorithm, I feel like producing good content and being consistent doesn't really make up for that. So let's get back into the article. The article sheds light on YouTubers who are once extremely popular, who notice that their engagement or their um, reach has slowed down tremendously. Even when they search for themselves, they realize that their videos are kind of buried and not being seen, as well as not being on the trending pages. The article also brings up the culture of YouTube and how the culture of YouTube has changed. You know, back in the day, anybody and their mama could have a platform and have their content be seen. However, due to issues with piracy, violence, and just inappropriate content, YouTube locked down what could be monetized. This equals out to your video's reach. If you're not going to bring people to their site, then you're basically going to get pushed down the ladder. Hence the title, The Golden Age of YouTube is over. So in this day and time, or in this environment, you can't just post anything and expect it to get automatic views. It just doesn't work like that anymore. YouTube has every right to do that. This is their platform, it's their business. If they feel like you're not producing content, 
that's going to help them thrive as a business then they have every right to push you down the ladder but my whole thing is if this is what the big creators are feeling you can only imagine what the smaller creators are feeling another reason why smaller creators get left out of the algorithm or they don't benefit from the algorithm is because of youtube's business strategy youtube has to compete with these other content producing platforms Therefore, they need to keep people on their site longer. And now the sun is trying to come out in the middle of my video. Where were you at earlier? But the way you compete with other platforms is by making sure that you have top quality on your site. You're gonna push your best and biggest creators to the forefront so they can bring in that traffic. So you got top high quality content that isn't inappropriate, AKA isn't offensive, as well as very popular and very trendy. So if you're not providing that, it's basically like, and that's a little dramatic, but that's really what it is. You kind of get the boot. All in all, I was reading this article and it was very informative. However, it wasn't really giving me a solution. I like solutions. So I decided to go back to Google and try to find some more stuff. I didn't really find anything, unfortunately. However, I did see a lot of vlog type chat rooms that, you know, were basically discussing the same thing about YouTube's algorithm. I saw entries like, anyone else notices that YouTube doesn't suggest in your feed small YouTubers with low views on their videos? Instead, all of the suggested videos have thousands of views. How does YouTube suggest or show our videos? I am curious. <laughs> or seriously Google, how hard is it to make a recommendation algorithm that sprinkles in about 50% of related content that I haven't already watched or that is not just the most popular videos in the most popular channels? What are you programming being paid for? Honestly, YouTube gets worse every day. Have there been mass layoffs at Google yet or something? And this is the one that made me really, really laugh. It is really bad. I have I only have recommended videos from the same four to five channels I've been watching this past week. Can you imagine a whole home page with videos only from five channels? Not even subscribe to them. This is weird. YouTube must be broken. And I even saw some back and forth, people going back and forth, kind of like arguing about YouTube's role in pushing content. Like, is it YouTube's responsibility to push content of small creators? Is it on the creators to push their content? So that was a pretty interesting conversation to read. Basically, I felt seen and I felt heard and I realized that it's not just me that's feeling this way about the algorithm. And even on my channel, like, I mean, not my channel, but even on my personal YouTube, like when I watch videos, I can watch one video and then I'll see like 10 videos of the same type video. Like, don't, don't watch one of uh, what I eat in a day because you're going to get at least four what I eat in a day videos on your homepage. It's, it's pretty crazy. These people were explaining my exact feelings, my exact thoughts, and even in these, you know, conversations, I found advice, advice that I've already kind of identified with. I even stumbled on some advice that explains the advice that I'm going to give you today. Basically, expecting traffic to flow through your channel off of just posting alone is a thing of the past. The best way to build a channel is to use other platforms. For example, Instagram, Twitter, Discord. You're gonna have to rely on those to bring in traffic to your channel. Even relying on traditional networking. And shout out to all my fellow introverts out there. I know that going to people face to face and talking to them about your channel seems mad cringy, but it's what we're gonna have to do and for the sake of our channels. That's what's been presented to us now. And I know some of you guys are out there probably listening to this advice and it's like girl duh obviously we already know that asia so for those people who already know this do you boo but for all my small creators out there who are getting discouraged who are struggling use this advice as your guiding light until the day we have full-blown engagement i mean for me i think the most frustrating part about trying to grow a channel in this environment this new algorithm environment is knowing that youtube values trendier people and i personally don't fall within a trendy category i'm not a trendy person i've never been a trendy person which is one of the biggest reasons i had to kind of fall in love with my own individuality because 
I kept trying to be something that I wasn't, you know? So the next step for me is to find a way to be a part of the trend, but also honor my individuality. And I feel like that is what's gonna bring the traffic to my channel. Once I find a way to merge that, once I find a way to have that balance, then that's when the algorithm hopefully will work for me, maybe. I don't know, it's getting a little crazy out here. But my hope is that it's not impossible, it just takes time. When your channel is growing and thriving, you're gonna look back at these days when you're struggling and you're gonna say, it was worth it. It was all worth it. I'm hoping I, I feel that way. That's, that's the hope. I guess I'll leave this video off here kind of ranting, didn't want to rant, but you know. I'm a ranter. If you guys feel the same way, if you know a creator out there, or even if you're on a different platform and you're feeling the same way, please let me know in the comments. Leave a comment. Leave a comment. And let me know your experience with this. Uh, but all in all, thank you for watching. If you're watching, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next video. Bye. They're taking a pure electric signal and sculpting it into something of beauty.